Hey guys, welcome back to GG Gaming. I am your host, Andrew, and this is Kiba. Hi, everyone. Again, uh, we're recording yeah. this one late. We're recording this one Sunday rather than Thursday because the Mother's Day preparation, we were kind of busy and we're like, you know, we still want to get an episode out a week, so we are kind of pushing it with Sunday. This might go up either late Sunday night or early Monday, but um, we're still going to attempt to get uh, another episode out this week, so we're kind of pushing it once a week. It's almost going to be like two a week this week, but whatever. Yeah. Try. And it looks like uh, I accidentally am wearing the same shirt I did last time, which is all good because it's Dragon Ball Z. Is it really an accident? <laughs> sort of. Sort of. <laughs> Alrighty, so I guess we'll jump right into it because since it's Sunday night, Game of Thrones goes on in an hour and we got an oh, hour. Yeah. <laughs> so, what you been playing, Kiba? Um, let's see, what have I been playing? Um, I've been reverting back to retro gaming because. Uh, That's always good. Um,. Just downsizing in life right now, um, and so, you know, I've been focused on a lot of my voiceover stuff, so I was like, well, I don't really have time for the big games coming out, um, nor the money to do so, so I've been kind of going back to my GameCube, mm, and um, that's awesome. I've been examining one of my favorite games uh, to play on the GameCube, which was uh, Resident Evil 4, um, and then I also went back and played Wario World, which, if you haven't played Wario World, it's one of the best, like, I think I know what that is. That. Uh, so Wario World um, is basically a Mario game that's based around Wario. You play as Wario, and he gets—he's this big treasure hunter, and he steals this On the black Game diamond. Cube? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm look this um, up one right of the now. best games. It's great. Um, and basically, he, he gets his black diamond. This black diamond that he takes—it's like this evil stone, and it breaks free from his treasure like cove, and it gets like it basically transports him to this like weird world where he has to collect back all of his treasure and hmm. get back his like fortune and it's super crazy super cool and i've been playing that so uh yeah it's one of the it's a it's definitely a sleeper hit how on have the i not GameCube. heard of this game i don't know I'm how looking you at it right now Wario world 2003 oh it's wonderful yeah oh. it's, it's great in 2004 it was re-released as player's choice mm -hmm. it was definitely a really good one I the only Wario game I played and absolutely loved was, um, War um what's it called Wario Land, two uh, I think two or three the one on Game Boy Color, and that was so much fun. Oh yeah, totally. I I was like that I was could go for more one. Wario games after that, and I just never did. Well, there's one that you now need to get a GameCube and play oh. because it's really the good. The Wii U doesn't play GameCube, does it? No, but you can. Um, Is it a digital title? There. No, unfortunately, the GameCube's the only console for some reason that's uh, not a digital virtual console on either the Wii or the well, GameCube. Well, I have a GameCube, so... Well, good, then you need to find Wario World. I think my copy was 25 bucks mm -hmm. um, to find it, because it's really hard to find in good condition, too. Now, you said Resident Evil uh, 4 is your favorite GameCube game? Uh, well, no, it's one of my favorites. Oh, okay. Because um, I was thinking, when you said that, I was thinking Resident Evil um, as one of my favorite GameCube games. And uh, it was funny that you said four, because I was like, oh, we're on the same series. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was thinking of the oh. first one. Well, the remake of the first one. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that my favorite GameCube game like stems from Super Mario Sunshine to Paper Mario on the Thousand Year Door, which is my favorite game of all time. Um, oh, I gotta play you know, Sunshine. So good. Um, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, that Luigi's Mansion. Actually, um, Wind Waker... The GameCube version, I was like, this is good, but it had some flaws, but the HD mm -hmm. version was just, they like fixed all oh. the flaws. See, I, I didn't see any flaws with okay, the GameCube well, version. By flaws, there were kind of annoyances, like one, the, the sail being really slow, mm -hmm. um, and you had to constantly change the wind. So like if you were going to pick up a Triforce shard in the ocean, and you like just passed, this mm -hmm. is like, oh, now I need to change the wind just to... Just to turn this and get, oh, yeah. I passed it again. Like, you had to, like, oh, yeah. you oh, had yeah. to purposefully overshoot it just so you could turn around. So it's, like, just little things like that. And so they introduced <laughs> the, the swift sail, which you don't yeah. have to change the wind. And it was just, it was brilliant. That and um, they shortened or condensed down the, the searching for the Triforce, that last Triforce shard. See, see, I didn't like that. Because, I like, in the original GameCube game, yeah, like, I was really pissed because I had to continuously shift and the triforce part was my least favorite part of it but in the hd remaster the the thing i loved about wind waker was that it was difficult 
to do certain things, even if it was just because it was tedious or just because it was mm. like annoying. But what made that game what it was was because it was trying to be very authentic in respect to sailing and the the seven seas still and all was that kind of thing. Just they oh, shortened it, great. it a bit to the point yeah. where it was it was an acceptable amount of exploration. That's true. Like uh, instead of going through um, that, like. I don't think it was a hundred floors, but like going through that long dungeon to get a mm-hmm. map at the end, like you just got the Triforce shard. So it's like instead of getting a map to a map to a map to a shard, you're like, oh, I'm gonna map to a shard, and it was just like so much better. <laughs> no more maps to maps. I hated that, <laughs> and I heard that the Japanese version on GameCube before we got it, that search quest was even longer. Wow, I, I I would be down because I could play that game all day. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed it, but it just it, I felt like I wasn't getting a reward out of it, and it was just like oh yeah, it, it it felt like a different game. Like you were playing Zelda, and then you were playing Exploring Marathon. It's just like it didn't mesh well. Like it, yeah. I would rather the Exploring Marathon be for getting all the extra things like the heart containers and stuff, which I also did, but I don't want that to be a part of the story. Hmm. So, but I got everything in that game on on the on the Wii U because I was like, this is the version to play. <laughs> so yeah, much fun. Uh, I've also been playing um, my friend's indie game. Actually, um, it's really really good. Uh, it's still in you know demo mode, but it's called Lumos, and uh, it's made by James Hurd. And he asked us a question last week, but uh, he he built it with RPG Maker. Um, and I love those type of games just cause they're so, they're so interesting. Cause even though you, anyone can really build those games up cause the program is so user friendly and then you can really do something with it. Mm. Um, you know, there's certain ones like the crooked man. That was great. Um, Ib was an amazing game. Um, and those type of games. But now this one, uh, he's making, and you know, he had some YouTubers actually play it too, which he's gaining popularity with that. And that one I checked out myself cause, um, I, I was like, oh, I'm interested in to see how where this goes, and it's it's really cool demo. You should check it out. Hmm. So, is it a PC yeah. game? Yeah, and that's the problem because I'm not a PC gamer. Oh, uh, it's just like a short demo though. <laughs> you could easily play it, probably. Because <laughs> um, I didn't need a high powered computer to play it, but hmm. your camera keeps getting blurry, and then. I know it happens. Yeah. Just let it let people let people adjust. <laughs> See, usually when I, when I listen to podcasts, even when they have videos, I usually don't even watch the videos because I'm exactly. usually listening to podcasts as I work. So I'm like, um, do we even need a video? But uh, somebody asked, hey. like, oh, I'd rather have video while listening to this. So I was like, all right, let's do video. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah. Um. So, uh, we have we have tons of questions actually. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Let me. But you tell me what you've been about playing. What I've been playing first. I want to know um, what you've been playing. Which was really just a few, a uh, couple of similar and different things. One, the overlapping similar one is Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key. They added yes. Zootopia to the game um, with Zootopia oh, medals my life. and um, Zootopia medals and it. some Zootopia outfits, which I disagree with. The purchasing of it is like. You can for a limited amount of time. You can get the the outfits by you unlock the the avatar board or whatever it's called for three thousand mm-hmm. coins. That's like twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't want to spend forty bucks on two characters. They're just outfits. You yeah. know that you can do the discounted price of I think fourteen and change, maybe fourteen ninety nine for. Mm, how many? I want to say 17. 1700? Or three? Maybe uh-huh. it's 3000. Uh, of those metal jewel things. And like unlocking all the 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 um, stuff. Like the special quests. I'm just like, I don't want to spend money to unlock these, you know? Mm-hmm. If, if I was going to get anything um, outfit wise, uh, I would like to have the foxtail. And that's just it, really. Because I have I have yeah. the wings from like the the Halloween Town outfit, and I'm like, no, oh, these wings are cool, and I'm like, I feel like the foxtail would go well with with that, mm-hmm. but I'm like, I'm not gonna spend money for it. Like, I'm done spending money on Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key. 
I would spend money on Zootopia stuff in a heartbeat. I started getting the they're like like the Zootopia animals. Like I think you, you carry them on your back. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just starting it up now just to figure out the exact pricing. Let's see the Avatar board. It is um. Da -da 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 -da. All right. See, normal, not necessarily normal, but the ones already in the game that you can unlock, and not by leveling up and doing stuff, but the ones you pay for. There's like the Cheshire Cat hat and like the Wonderland yeah. outfit, the Sora and Rico outfits. Um, they vary between 500 medals or whatever they're called. I say medals, mm. I think they're jewels. And the Sora and Riku ones are 1,500. And the Zootopia mm -hmm. ones are 3,000, and the offer ends May 15th. So for 3,000 medals, let me check out how much that costs. Uh, opening up the shop. See, buy discounted 3,000 jewel pack. Uh, get 3,000 jewels for the price of 1,700. So for 15 bucks. So for 15 bucks, you can unlock the Avatar board. Like once a week. Wow. That's just a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, Especially on a I do game. for maybe like five bucks. I'd be like, yeah, I'll throw five bucks down. But even throwing in the word discounted, I'm like, it's it's 15 bucks. Come on. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean. But aside from that, you know, so it's just like, whatever. I'm pretty happy with the outfit that I have right now in the game. Um, I am actually pretty high level, too. I think I'm like 119, but... Um, let me start it back up, show the camera my character, just because I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, notices. Um, yeah, because I, I was kind of going around on the different avatar boards. I like to complete them one at a time, but yeah. um, see, this is my outfit, if you could see it. Oh, I was kind of nice. using the, the um, Xehanort one, or Ansem. And so yeah. you can see my medals and stuff. I mean, it's kind of blurry, That's the nice. camera. It's kind of blurry. But, yeah, I was like, this is cool. And I, I just used the starter uh, keyblade, and I upgraded it all the way. And I'm like, this is pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, I like the game, but I don't like the the amount of money you needed to spend on certain things. I'm just like, oh, yeah. I'm like, f five, maybe t $10 would be pushing it. $10 is still a lot. But 15 bucks, I'm just like... For two costumes that don't offer anything but a visual aesthetic, I'm just like, I'm not dropping. You know, I'm some not gonna people, drop some 30 people are collectors like that, you know. I am too, so. but I'm just like, enough is enough. I spent money uh. foolishly on Me Tomo because I was trying to get that ninja sword. Uh. I, I uh. threw down like ten dollars to get like a, a bunch of coins. I didn't get the sword, and I threw down another ten dollars. I'm like, no, th I have to get this sword. I already spent ten dollars. I'm spending another ten dollars, and then I missed it all, and I was like, I was a waste of twenty bucks. And then eventually, oh, I, I Me Tomo so fast. Eventually, <laughs> I got the sword. I'm like, awesome, but I'm not spending money anymore. <laughs> that oh, ruined yeah, it. I, 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 I deleted Me Tomo so fast. Why? I because I just couldn't handle another social media outlet. That's really what it is. And, See, I like it just um, to poke around and. Just like get a new outfit or something, and see, just... see, I could do that, but then again, I have Animal Crossing. <laughs> do they have that on the phone? No, but I have on my 3DS. There will be an Animal Crossing on the phone. Oh, Animal Crossing and that. something else. I forget what the other but one was. The, the main thing is like, Me Tomo is a great idea. Like, don't get me wrong, but I, I just couldn't spend the time and keep track of everything in such a space consuming too like mm. data usage is insanity uh, on that just because it's so crazy but um you know it was nice talking to some people i don't get usually talk to on there like calibre and a bunch of other you know voice acting friends that really aren't on facebook as much so that was cool so but, you actually um, del deleted it recently well yeah. like today um like what i think it was right after i got back from asahi Con. because i saw you on there um, like yeah, recently. no, I was on there for a... Really? Someone's using my account. I'm wondering if your questions stay up there. Because your, your account no, well, is still the there. Is, it's just... Here's how I see it. It's like, it's not like you delete it and then all your data is gone. Right. Like, so you can, it's an app. You can always download it and so, pick it up again. Because exactly. you're still on there. It's just, basically, you're, it's going to be inactive. I got a couple yeah. of people 
I got one of your friends actually who um who sent me a friend request, but I don't know who it is. Who is and it? I'm not allowed to look at their Facebook profile, so I don't know who it is. It says Jocko. What's their J A K O? Oh, I don't know who that is. But they're your friend, and they. Let's... I'd have to probably like. I'd have probably have to look and see. I also got a Facebook a friend request from someone else. I don't know. Huh. Um, suggested friends. Um, wait, where are you on here? Here, here's you. Yeah, so I can interact with you, but basically you're not going to interact anymore. Exactly. And I saw somebody. Somebody responded to one of your questions, and it was Kyle Hey Bear, and I was like, "Yeah, oh. <laughs> I used to yeah, be friends no. with him on Facebook because I met him uh-huh. at a convention, and I guess because I never stayed, like, I stopped, I kind of stopped going to cons a bit. Uh, I guess Ooh. like maybe he defriended me, which is fine. I don't, I don't take offense. Well, I mean, to that. I think it's more of it's more of like a lot of voice actors. Yeah. usually just keep people on that are really close and whatnot. Like Kyle and I are in a couple things together, so. And um, I take no offense to that. I'm not. I'm not saying yeah, that. Like and, I can't believe you did that. You know, it's it's yeah, difficult. because I mean, connected. I think we're not even actually friends on Facebook, mm-hmm. but we're like through Twitter and like yeah. me Tomo. But, um, yeah, just because you know. Like, for example, I wish I could just shut off friends' requests for a bit on mine, mm-hmm. um, just because I've been getting an influx of people that are just random or, you know, I, I've met, I, I don't, like, they're spam bot, so it's, like, starting to get out of control. I mean, I have, like, 2,500 friends almost, <laughs> I'm like, get out. So, um, I, yeah, I can't handle anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to look but, at this um, camera, um. My face looks crooked on the camera, but it doesn't look crooked in the mirror. I'm wondering if there's something wrong with my camera. <laughs> it makes my eye look like it's hanging down low, and I'm just like, what the heck? It's like, my my <laughs> eye doesn't do that in the mirror, so why is it doing this on the camera? What's going on? I look like I messed up. Ah. Whatever. Um, so what else have you played? Right, um, so I, I've been playing, just for fun, recently I played Super Smash Bros. with a friend of mine, oh, and I love that game, great. like, just, play, see, just I, picking I'm it up. competitive. <laughs> see, I'm, I used to be more competitive, but now, because um, I played it all the time in college, and Ooh. so I just, you know, it was fun to play, um, at the time, competitively, because I was just constantly playing with my friends, but, um, and that was with Brawl, because that was when uh-huh. Brawl was out, um. This new one, though, is a lot more balanced. Oh, it yeah. still has its, um... Save Bayonetta. Well, Bayonetta's I very suck broken. at using her. Very broken. I he- I heard that, but, you know, I, I, well, I, I suck at using her. I suck at using those combo characters. Mm-hmm. I'm sure if I, um, fooled around, like, in the practice mode, I'd be pretty beast with her, because apparently she's really cheesy. But it's... Oh, she's- Mm-hmm. She's very cheap, very cheap. I'm pretty sure she's close to being banned from all competitions. I'm pretty sure she is. Really? Um, just because she's she literally you can no, there's so many unblockable things you can do and just spam things. It's not it's not even a matter of skill. Like a friend of mine says, it's like for only t- for only five dollars, you too can win Smash tournaments. <laughs> And, you know, it's true because I, you know, I play Ness competitively mm-hmm. in Bowser Jr. And, um, like, I played against a Bayonetta and he was just showing me, like, just look how cheap. And I couldn't get a hit in just because it was the same attack spammed across, like, the whole screen. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it was cool to add Bayonetta in, but they need to fix her immediately. <laughs> yeah. It's been way too they long can, for her They can not actually fix her because of the, the DLC, like the patches and stuff. Something they didn't, I guess they didn't have uh, for Brawl, so they never were able to fix Meta Knight. But they can and should do it with Bayonetta. Oh, yeah. It seems like my best characters, uh, in addition to the ones I have the most fun playing, are Sonic and Mega Man. Um, and recently I've been having fun with, and I'm decent with, Cloud and Corrin. Oh, Corrin. Yeah, he's oh, he's Corrin. a little cheesy too, though. I got it. I got to admit. Oh yeah, but um, I don't think he's like unstoppable. Oh yeah, no, he's he's definitely better than Bayonetta, <laughs> and Cloud is beastly. So yeah, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I love Smash Brothers. I've been training a lot, trying to get better at it because I do want to start competing again and. Um, 
It's fun. I love it. Well, there's I've been playing it that, for a long time. There's that rumor that um, Smash Bros. is going to be a uh, a release, a launch title on the NX. Oh, yeah. Which, if that's the oh, case, yeah. I'm wondering if they're going to start um, bringing DLC to that. Because it's not oh. the Wii U version. Here's And they well, don't have the to worry about porting the characters to the 3DS because it's not the Wii U version. Oh. So they could add in Ice Climbers. What, what, no, what I'm saying also is they're not porting over Smash Brothers 4. They're doing a completely brand new one. For the NX launch? Yes, yes. I don't think they, that they're going to do that. That is... That's what the whole article was talking about, was bringing the new, like a new Smash Brothers to it. Not necessarily bring Smash 4. I don't think so. I, I read through a couple of Maybe them. new is like an updated version, kind of like, um, like how fighting games... It didn't say updated games... version, it said like a Smash 5. That's like saying, that's like saying... I mean, if you think Street about Fighter it... Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 4 Smash... Ultimate or is like, it's like a new version, but it's an update that's not what of I'm the saying. older one. That's not what it was saying. Hmm. What I'm saying, though, is, like, you got to think about it. Smash 4 came out two, almost three years ago now, if we look at it, because it was 2014, so almost three years. And you think and they're going to pump out another Smash I, every few well, years well, now? Even, even here's the thing is how I look at it, is I feel like the demand is needed. Like I was talking about last time we talked about the NX, is, like, Nintendo has to keep up. Um, not necessarily meaning, like, pump out a new smash brothers every year but they gotta kind of keep up with the pace of these other consoles giving new stuff out every year mm. like we always see like another halo or another call of duty is one of the big ones or a battlefield like they do that because it's an easy formula i think by now after what 99 is when smash 64 was out or something like that 98 i have no idea um around almost 20 years now they should have perfected the formula to give uh, some sort of fighting game now not to be like you know that's what they should do but you know even if it is an updated version of smash and maybe the articles are not as clear as they looked like they were even if it is they have to do something different because it can't just be a remaster as a launch title mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense <coughs> because obviously the launch title too is going to be for is zelda um, that's an obvious thing because they already talked about that their E3 presentation for this year is all Legend of Zelda yeah. based. So knowing that, that means that the first launch title, the first, one of the first few is going to be the new Zelda Wii U, the new Zelda title. Mm -hmm. Um, cause that's also going to be released in conjunction with the Wii U. Now, does that mean that the Wii U is also going to be put out of commission? No, because obviously they're releasing a Zelda. So yeah, it could possibly be an I updated version of Smash. the Wii U Smash. doesn't get put out of its misery. Oh, it's not. It's not. It's it's way too good of a console to be put out right away. Like, for example, the Xbox One came out, the 360 still lasted for quite a bit. Um, another four years. Um, but the, the the way I see it is, you know, we're, we're going to be getting a couple of cool launch titles. If we get a remaster or, or like an updated version with new characters, that'd be cool mm -hmm. uh, for Smash. But... Honestly, I don't think they should do that. I think they should either, you know, make it a port, because already the NX is supposed to play Wii U games, so it doesn't need to be ported. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But if they are going to do anything with Smash, it needs to be something different and something new <laughs> and something improved to compete with everybody else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, not to get into the NX spiel again. One of, my, one of my things is if they make a new Smash... I don't want them to remove characters anymore. I'd rather than... Oh, no. Because some fighting games remove characters, and it's disappointing. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people were upset at the characters they removed from um, from Brawl. Mm -hmm. And back in Brawl, people were upset about the characters they removed from Melee. So it's like, just, use, just put in all of them and build off of that, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, eventually I mean... there'll be too many characters... I guess, but just... Well, well, everybody wants Snake back, and everybody wants Ice Climbers. And everybody wants Wolf um, back. Maybe not everybody. Uh, I don't, maybe I don't not want everybody. Wolf. I don't mind I don't him not Wolf being back. in, but I know what it's like to want a character to come back. Back when I wanted Mewtwo back, and it's like, finally they brought him back. I would like for them to bring back uh, Young Link as a different character, though. Similar to... Um, what he does oh. in um, Hyrule Warriors, where he uses the masks. Uh, yeah, I get. Oh, that'd be cool. 
Or like, you know, well, that stems from like Majora's Mask. Mm-hmm. So that would be really cool. Yeah, so that um, like a final smash could be Fierce Didi Link, you know? So uh, so that he's not cool. just a copy of Adult Link. Because we already have. See, I don't even I don't even use Final Smashes anymore. No, me neither. But it's, it's like it'd so be I'm cool like to, I don't even. You know. I I think the one thing is like I love the idea they did with the the poll, where you you know it was voted on. Well, that's the um, thing. I thought that was really now cool. they have a list of of the top wanted characters, so yeah. they can really use that to entice people to get the NX if they release oh. a new Smash. Even if they even if they release a port and decide to um keep up uh with with that version like let's say they put the the one from the wii u and the 3ds they decide to put put the port that to the nx and say oh now we're going to support this one um people will be all over that if they start supporting it with like those highly wanted characters if they say oh we're we're gonna launch it with uh ice climbers and wolf like the brawl pack or something you know no here's the thing i see though here's here's the thing Nintendo explicitly said they're not releasing any more DLC for Smash. For that so, Smash. What? <laughs> for that Smash game. Yeah, so what I'm saying is then why would they port it over and then make DLC for the same Smash? Because it's a game? new Smash game. It's not. Smash NX. See, that's what that's that's why I realized that they're probably either going to make a new Smash Brothers or allow you to port your DLC over like say like a Rock Band where you could basically point your songs to the next game. That's what they would do, rather than being like, oh, but what about those we're going to stop making don't DLC. don't have the Wii U or 3DS version. They can't port then, over their data, because they don't no, have No, to. but they can buy the DLC still. Okay. I mean, DLC is but an I'd, item that can be downloaded, obviously, to two different consoles. I'd rather those characters be built into the game. Mm, but here's the thing, is why would they lose money that way? Um... It's that's just it yeah. comes off as money grubbing, but but it's a it's a competitive. Here's the thing: is like the the video game industry, even though it's about making quality content, you still got to make money to be in commission. Still, I mean, they'd so make they, money from the game, people buying the game. But 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 then they would make even more money with DLC, and people still buy it because they want those extra characters. So even still, you may have a replacement for those characters that are like you know King K. Rule, King Boo, Waluigi. Um, you know, Snake is back, Ice Climber's Wolf, but then those other six or seven that you didn't have in Wii U version, those are also available for you to download. So you have these built-in new characters with the same port of a game, but then also at the same time, you can get that DLC when you didn't have it I don't it mind it if you don't have to rebuy it for each version. Like, if they decide well, from I'm, here I'm, on out, if you bought these characters, you can put them in the next installment. You know. Well, that's what I'm saying is like they'll probably do something like that because that's the one thing Nintendo's lacking is you can't transfer over data. You have to buy things again from the store um, most of the time. Like they don't have that system where once you download it, it's yours forever. Mm. Um, once it's deleted, you have to pay for that $40 game again. Well, they did that um, where or if that... you bought one on the 3DS or Wii U, you can port it to the other version. No, what I'm saying, though, is, like, for example, if your data gets deleted, though, mm-hmm. on accident, you have to buy it again. Oh, really? It's not saved into the... Yeah, that's Nintendo's thing, is you, it's not saved to a cloud oh. system. You can't re-download? So, even though... Uh-uh. You huh. have to buy it again. That's you know, pretty working, shitty. Working at, working at GameStop, I found that out very quickly. Oh, Why? Well, customers so, complain to you? Yeah. And I'm like, I can't do anything about it, but you can call Nintendo about it, and that's their policy right now, is that once you buy something... That is a temporary purchase. Like, it's permanent as long as you keep it saved or whatever. But if you accidentally delete it, you have to buy it again. Mm. So it's it's something that Nintendo's also behind on. So I'm sure that they would port over characters DLC if you purchased it in the past for the NX. Mm-hmm. But regardless, um, you know, the major thing that, uh, that I think Nintendo needs to do is just really stay with the idea of releasing new things every year they can. Um, You know, there's one big thing that people are not buying Wii U's for, new Nintendo systems for, and it's a new Metroid game. Um, That's a one big thing, and a new Legend of Zelda. Um, Because most of the Legend of Zeldas we've gotten, we've received, have been 
on the 3DS or the Wii, like the last one, the Wii being Skyward Sword, and the newest one on the 3DS being Triforce Heroes, it doesn't help to keep releasing these remasters. They People want that new Zelda game that Pete Link's jumping off a horse, and like it's an open world, and it's fully explorable and changes. Although I do like, want an HD Skyward Sword because I never played Skyward Sword. Just get, literally, you can, I, w- I, I would just Wiimote get Skyward Plus. Sword... I, I would I would just if you get a Wii U eventually just get Skyward Sword and put it in. I have a Wii U, but I don't way. have a Wiimote Plus. Get one. That's more money. <laughs> oh my gosh! Then don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be less expensive to buy a copy of Skyward Sword and a Wiimote Plus than it is to buy a remastered Skyward. Yeah, but Sword. I'd rather play the remaster. I don't know. I Skyward Sword wasn't my favorite. Like I did not like that game at all. That's what I heard, but it, it's still it, it's cool. Cool bosses, cool cool dungeons, but. Just the the game itself was not See, the best. See, I played all the Zelda games except for Skyward Sword, Minish Cap, uh, Four Swords Adventures, and I think that's it. So I want good. to play them because I want to play the entire series. Yeah, of course. Oh, uh, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. I also didn't play. Both of those are really great. Which I want to play. Um. So, I will. Uh, we should start on these seven questions. We've got eight of them. Or nine sure. Of them. Actually, the other game I've been playing, the last one. Oh yeah. Uh, I was I was continuing more of Far Emblem Fates, and I'm try- I'm that game. hooking up the last two people for their children, and I and looking online for the the Parallax. Actually, I think there's I think I need one more female to hook up with the last guy, but um. I think I think I'm supposed to get one more female, but anyway, I just found out when I was looking through the paralogs to make sure I I got them all before I started um, recruiting the children. I apparently missed recruiting Benny and Charlotte, and I'm like, wait, when do you get them in Revelations? And earlier on, they come, they appear alongside Silas to fight against you, uh-huh. but I didn't I didn't know that you couldn't kill them like you couldn't beat them you had i guess you had to keep them alive but like yeah. i didn't know that so i fought them and i was like I-, I killed them i was like oh they'll probably join me afterwards and they never did so apparently i i killed benny and charlotte and now i lost benny charlotte and their son ignatius i'm just like oh see that's 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 where they get you to replay i'm it. not gonna replay it i have 36 hours on that game oh i would re- i'd replay that game so hard i played put so many hours into fire emblem awakening that I, I knew I was going to play more of Fire Emblem Fates. So, um, yeah, totally. <sighs> Although I love using my Amiibos on Fire Emblem Fates so I can get new things. It's nice. But why would I erase those 36 hours? You don't have to. Just start a new file. No. I don't have room for you... a new file. Oh. Because I have Birthright and Conquest on the other two files. Ah, got so it. So now I'm playing Revelations. So they're like 30-something hours on each game, and I'm like, I'm just looking forward to just finally finishing Revelations. So I'm just like, yeah. oh, I don't have Benny or, or Charlotte, whatever. I had I had them in the other two games, or, or the other, whichever ones you could get them in. I'm just upset that I couldn't have, like, my, for my final file, all of them, you know? Yeah. Just like, oh, I wish I could just hack it to just get them. Like, that pisses me off. I was yeah. looking forward to just having every character in in the Revelations file, but no, Ooh. I had to f- mess up somewhere. Oh boy, that pisses me off. But so, how many questions we got? We've got. Let me count them actually, really quick. One, and it's from same person, but he's been giving us really good questions, cool. and I'll tell you. One, two, three, four. These are all from the same person. Four of them are, and then one is from someone else okay cool okay so we'll go with reese's questions this is from reese bridger in the uk he's the director of zulaplex cool. he's awesome did he ask anything um, last out. week no i don't think What's so zulaplex? Um, zulaplex is a audio series based kind of very similarly to the it's a uk version of like clerks basically oh. Oh. um and so i'm a part of that and uh he i've been with that project for almost two years and now i cast directed cool. um, i don't know what two. clerks is it's really cool Oh, really? Really? Wow, you should check it out, because it's a Kevin Smith, uh, Jason Mewes classic. It's great. I mean, I know it's of it, comedy. but I just I don't know. So what is it? Oh, like yeah. a, it's, an anime? It's dry what humor. Is it an animation? Or a game? Or? 
No, audio audio series. Oh, so it's like a remake of Clerks? No, it's its own thing, but I'm just oh, saying it's, it's very simil- similar. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's gotcha. in the it's in the it's in the realm of dry humor and like dark themes like Clerks is. So, um, so did Reese I wonder if Reese listened to the last episode with me and you. He probably did. I don't know. Hi, Reese. I, I can ask thanks that. for the question. Hi. Yeah, thanks for the questions, Reese. Oh, the four questions. Um, thanks for the questions. All yeah. Right. So he said, uh, first one is, let to your own devices, what kind of video game would you make and why? Ooh. My own. Um, I want to. I want to talk about this, but at the same time, I also don't want to... Um, give away any original ideas i, I had because i had that's true. i had a couple of game ideas so i don't want to um i don't want to talk about them publicly without copywriting them Ooh. um but yeah. i am working on a game right now i'm doing the artwork that's for cool. a game that i i talked about uh in a previous podcast episode with uh with the other hosts um yeah, right now i'm working on I think that because t- I'm I'm doing the artwork for it, so I believe it's called Davin. I don't think it's the advent. It might be the advent. Miss the Adventures of Davin. I I forget, but it's based on a short story that um the person programming the game and writing the game. It's a short story of his, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of yeah. adventure elements to it. Um, uh, in a similar vein of not copying, but a similar vein of. Uh, like the Phoenix Wright games where you walk around and mm-hmm. interact, I guess. Uh, the the adventure mode is going to be similar to that. But there's also a poker mode because there's a lot of um, poker playing in the game. And there's going to be some unique elements to the poker that um, that will make it more like realistic, like characters interact. Like you can oh. like read their faces and, and certain things. Um, I don't want to go too in-depth with it because I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about it. But um, the 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 story itself is is um, since it's based on the short story, uh, David McDuran. Um, David is a, a half demon, uh, half human, and uh, it takes place in the Wild West. And he has um, he has some magic and like this magic uh, in a deck of cards that he uses to, and uh, to, that he uses to hunt uh, other demons who disguise themselves as humans. And it's a very interesting concept, and uh, I'm actually excited to to get the demo out soon. Because I think that it's unique enough to pick up some sort of following. So um, if we're going to keep doing this podcast every week like we're planning to, I'll keep you guys updated on that when when, um, when the demo's out. And then we would like to try and start up a fundraiser or Kickstarter for it. But as a, um, as for, my, for a game that I would want to build, again, I don't really want to get too in-depth with it because I have some original characters based on it but i would like to throw i would like to do something with um the whole dual game idea um kind of like how pokemon will have like a red or blue um except i want i would want to do something where um either game could be canon with a with a continuation like um kind of like oracle seasons and oracle ages it's like they're both canon it's just you choose which one you start with yeah i would like to do something like that that one of my ideas built off of that i would love to continue the chrono trigger series but uh. i really want to make a chrono break and i like made up a character that that was like had had like a piece of lavos like either sealed inside of him or he was created from a piece of lavos and i was like a long time ago when i was playing Chrono Trigger for the first time. I was designing this character who had like hair similar to like Lavos' spiky shell and I was like really into it and I was like I'm ready for a Chrono break with this guy as the main antagonist and you know uh, Square yeah. Enix was like nah we're not gonna continue this beloved franchise. Let's make more Final Fantasy. <laughs> Which bless. <laughs> I love Final Fantasy. Uh, but um, Nothing against Final Fantasy. Me personally I'm already kind of living that idea of making my own game because it's it's a boat i mean riot itself is 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 a multitude of things you know it, it we funded enough to make it a, a visual novel playable game for steam and we i plan on making four seasons of it and we we want it to be episodic and we have a great cast and you know we're still hard at work getting it perfect so that we really use the money wisely to make it happen mm-hmm. and if that keeps delaying it then that's what it is but i have a 
you know, the, the, the idea of creating superhero tropes that are so typical to everything and just flipping them upside down Mm -hmm. in the most unique ways. It's something that, you know, I haven't seen in comic books and I haven't seen in, in video games. And I would love to have a visual novel game like this where people can play it and be like, it's different every time. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they can really connect to the characters. I mean, writing these characters, I, I love them so much. They're like my children. And, um, you know, I made sure that I had the right voice cast to really portray them. And ever since then, you know, ideas and ideas have stemmed and, you know, people like Colton Nation, who's Alex, who, you know, has the complete nobody in the voice industry, not to be mean to him, but he's never had a role in his life. And mm-hmm. he got cast as the lead character. And he's since then been, you know, cast in a bunch of things with me, too, that are like coming out on, you know, games and anime wise. Because and of he's, you? He's a, like you got him. Well, I don't. It's not. I don't. I don't want to say it's because of me. He's. He's. He's a. He's a talented guy, and he. You know, I. I presented some opportunities. You know, he met new people through the Riot cast, and maybe that's where maybe. it came from. But I would never. I would never take credit for well, someone right. else's I, success. I kind of didn't mean it like that, yeah. but I meant to. No, kind yeah, of no. Like your project, and and you kind of like opened the door for him in a sense. Oh yeah, I would say that he would agree with that for sure too. Um, you know. Um, But, uh, you know, and then going to, like, people that have been in it for years, like Richard Epcar, you know. um, Love that guy's voice. Yeah, having him on the project with the second trailer, like, you're just hearing his voice in that trailer. I don't know if I saw the trailer. Oh, both trailers are really, really solid. Yeah, you should check them out. Um, They, you know, Richard is great. Liesl Wilkerson is great. Christopher Escalante, um, you know. All of all three of them, everybody in the cast, I just can't say enough about. And we're adding more and more people to it as we go because, you know, as seasons go on, we we want to make each version of game and each version a playable chapter, right. kind of like Telltale. Um, and that's where it kind of went um, with my idea was it's very similar to Telltale's layout of things where it's playable, visual novel, has different endings, could end in a multitude of ways, and then each season that gets added on, it's a new chapter to the life of Alex hmm. Lawrence and Riot and these different characters that you meet. Like, you know, it, it's it's a crazy thing to know that I'm developing something like this, but hmm. um, if I could, you know... Where's the game anything, aspect in it? You make choices? Well, yeah, it's very similar to any visual novel you play, like okay. Dramatical Murder or something like that, where it's very, like, you read through it like a comic, and then as certain decisions come up, you have to decide, like, Mass Effect or, but it, you know, a, a, de, you know a, a decision option, like, oh, do I go save this person or do I not? Or do I say this to this person or not? It's it's all dependent on what you do, mm-hmm. and it's, it's either outcome is still devastating because there's not really a happy ending yeah. to the story. Is there a, an um, ultimate... Um, ending though, like a canon yeah. ultimate ending. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's definitely a canon ending. In any branch, it'll always come down to the same ending. No. Oh. So okay. The, the, there's there's one true ending. You know, there's always bad, good end, and true end. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, bad and good end may not be you know the canon ending, but it's a good end or a bad end. But there's only a true ending. So there's three different endings to each season. Right. Um, and anything can really happen, but. What would happen is that once that true ending is received, if you played the first game and you got all the endings, the one ending that would follow the second game or the second season of the show would be that true ending. Um, and hmm. so when when you look at it like that, you play everything, but then at the same time, you're not like, oh, you know, you're not set on the idea of like, this is how it ends and this is how it's going to stay. Mm-hmm. You have options for the first game and whether you like it or not, the true ending is what's really going to happen in the next one. It follows the canon. Mm. Um, and so it, it just kind of gives a new outlook on certain things. I mean, I'm, I'm excited for it. I could talk about it all day, <laughs> but um, actually um, there, uh, since, since uh, since this is a series I'm already working on, my Spirit Legend series, for a long time I wanted to make a fighting game based on it. Mm-hmm. Which would be cool. Yeah. Um, with um, I had this idea of um, with um, like between rounds, um, like if like if you do a match with uh, let's say two two um, it's like the best of two best of three matches. So like if somebody loses. I wanted. I was thinking like, oh, if they die, like there's a reason they get back up. At you know maybe, mm-hmm. um, some story reason. Okay, I don't want to spoil anything, but maybe there something yeah. from the story itself. 
excuse me, that I have planned uh, in in the spirit in my comic Spirit Legends that would like revive somebody, and it's like all right, and they just go for like let me do this again kind of thing. But I I want something that can be um can go in depth, but at the same time I want a fighting game that you can pick up and be easy to play. I guess uh similar to. I don't want to necessarily compare it to Budokai, like the first uh, Dragon Ball Z Budokai, mm-hmm. because like in that everybody pretty much had the same inputs. Um, but I want there to be some versatility. I guess like maybe Street Fighter would probably be the best example in terms of like similar combos, but everybody has a couple of different things. But I imagine the speed being closer to something like Guilty Gear. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know. I I thought a lot about it back in the day, like years and years ago. Like, oh, this character would do this. Like this, uh, this other character would probably fight like this. And then I actually came up with a uh, a villain who um would play like as as an obstacle, like as a boss. He would be kind of like an obstacle, and you have to keep breaking through walls and advancing further. And then I think that's where mm-hmm. I came. I think that was the origin of a character who I plan to uh, come into the series later on. So that's that would cool. be exciting. <laughs> but yeah. um I guess let's get to the next question because So the next question is uh what new releases are you most looking forward to before twenty seventeen? Um you answered the f- this last question first, so I'll go ahead and answer this one because okay. my answer is really short. Okay. Um there's not really anything I'm looking forward to. Um just because I want to wait till E3, because that's usually when the 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 nerd juices <laughs> decide to flow inside my brain um so uh, the only thing i'm excited to hear about i would say if i rephrase it as like oh what am i excited to hear about um would be red dead redemption 2 is that um, coming out this year um not this year but it's supposed to be the next rockstar game so it could be any time i don't know is that official um, or is that cuz yes. i remember a rumor about it it's official is it going to follow the um, sun uh Where's it's it? not it's a prequel Oh, nice. Okay. Um, but uh, the thing I loved about that series, because I played Red Dead Revolver when it was on the PS2 and Xbox original. I want to play um, it. And that game, that game was my life. Like, I couldn't put it down. And then um, when I heard they were making a sequel to Red Dead Revolver, which was Red Dead Redemption, um, I about lost my shit. Um, because the, the series is so cool. Taking We don't really have a Western series besides, say, like, Gun and Call of Juarez, but those came, bef- those came after red dead revolver and um i i really thoroughly enjoyed red dead redemption just the whole idea of it so red dead redemption 2 i'm like freaking out because it's supposed to be bigger than both gta 5's map mm. as well as san andreas and the original red dead redemption wow. so i'm like jesus I'm that map is huge. they eventually put red dead revolver on the like as an hd or something it's not gonna happen uh, it, they would have done it by now because it's been i want to play that Oh, uh, like almost fifteen years, maybe sixteen. So my PS two is um, up. There's no way I'm gonna. Yeah, <laughs> you know. but um, you know, you could always try and find a port. I mean, they might they might release as like a trilogy collection. That'd but, be um, so cool. That I'm excited about. Um, I'm excited about. Um, of course, Legend of Zelda. Um, I have that's been not going to be this year. That's that. going to be in March, right? Yeah, March 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, so like what I've said is I'm not really looking at anything besides that's coming out this I am, year. And you'll probably agree with me, but probably forgot well, about it. Well, like I have a couple more like Battlefield One they announced. I'm like, oh shit, a World War One game. I'm okay with this. Finally, we're going back to, you know, World War One, which I love that era of war. Unfortunately, it's weird to say I love war, but that era of history is so rich with different new inventions it was so technologically advanced for its time and um i i'm just excited to see what they do with that game mm-hmm. um and then I'm, of course i'm i'm just excited to see what you know all the different studios you know last year bethesda won it for me with fallout 4 and doom um and then sony was a close second with final fantasy 7 um but i'm just excited to see more kingdom hearts um and all that kind of stuff so what are you excited about i was gonna for, say kingdom hearts 3.8 collection you mean 2.8 yes that's what i meant it's T- gonna be yeah i see the thing is it's like you know the collections are great don't get me wrong but i that's not what i want i know but i, I want, want to I don't see want collections. the ground zeros of kingdom hearts 3 that's true <laughs> metal gear true. kingdom hearts ground zeros yeah well i mean it's still a full couple games i mean dream drop distance because well, there's some new stuff there's back cover 
there's key back cover, which I think covers yeah. the events of the cell phone game. And um, yep. there's a short game with Aqua. And Aqua is yep. like one of my favorite characters. I'm excited so, about that. So um, I am excited for that collection for that new uh, material. Yeah. And it'll maybe tie me over a little bit until 3 comes out. But that yeah. was that was my game that I'm waiting for. All right. So, so we got two more big ones. Two more big questions. All right. We got so like we got 10 minutes 14 left. 14 minutes. So. Well, yeah, okay. 10 minutes so I can run upstairs and watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> I know. All right. So um, question. Do you think Angry Birds deserved its own movie? Are there any video games you'd like to have barred from ever being adapted? I've never played Angry Birds. I've well, tried it okay. actually. I just never. It's fine. I never downloaded. It. I was like, oh, this is cool. So do I? Yeah. Th- I mean, sure. Why not? I mean, I don't. I mean, it's it's nobody's getting hurt over it. <laughs> you know? My my personal taste is getting hurt over it. I don't think that movie should have well, ever been adapted into a live uh, a cartoon an animated sh- movie. Uh, Maybe a short, but not a feature film. It, wait, is it out? No, it's coming out like in the next few weeks. Oh, well, maybe I it, think. I don't know. Maybe some kids will like it. Oh no, the kids will love it because it's nothing but potty jokes and stupid humor. Um, when when you take a like, it, it's it, Angry Birds is such a franchise that it's great gaming, mobile gaming, like great handheld gaming. And you know when it was on those consoles, it was still great. Like it's like Plants vs Zombies. You can't really escape the fun of the simplicity of the fun, but. When I saw the trailer for the movie, you know, I was like, oh, an Angry Birds movie. That should be interesting. You know, the voice talent involved is great. Um, The animation looks great. Um, But I was like, you know what? I want to see exactly, you know, um, I want to see what it's like. So I saw the trailer and man, I I didn't feel, I felt so uncomfortable. And it's hard to make me feel uncomfortable. It was just the movie itself, just the idea of like, you know, you have this bird and the idea is that he has to go to anger management (laughs) to take care of his anger because he doesn't like people or other birds, I should say. And then in the middle of all this, the pigs come and invade like kind of Christopher Columbus style (laughs) and try to steal the eggs. And that makes sense. But the idea like that I don't like is that the game, they tried to make a story out of a game that's so simplistic. It doesn't have a story. It's very far, it's very far fetched. You know what they're probably going to make? Angry Birds, uh, the movie, the game. Oh, it's like what they tried to do with Dragon Ball Origins. Or uh, Look, Dragon Ball uh, Evolution. Uh, uh, you know that guy, the, the writer yep. for that movie, just apologized recently about it. Oh yeah, I know, I saw. Um, <laughs> Dragon but, Ball uh, the other part of the question: Are there any video games you like to have barred from ever being adapted? No, I have a couple. <laughs> I mean, um, just because it's I not feel that like they... I, I, I'm against adapting games. It's that I'm against that shitty attempts at adapting games. <laughs> You know? Well, but here's the thing: is like in this day and age, there's a couple games like I'm totally down for getting adaptations. Like Ratchet and Clank was great. Mm-hmm. Like that was a great idea. Um, Sly Cooper's coming out. That's a great idea because um, that's a story you can form into a movie. Mm-hmm. When you take games that don't have a fleshed out story like that, you can't. Like for example, Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, a long time ago, it was like one of the worst movies of all time, mostly because they didn't stick to source material. Even though the game is very straightforward, you know. Mario's a plumber that can, you know, eats mushrooms to get bigger so he can go and save Princess Peach who's stolen by Bowser. They didn't follow that. They made it, they tried to modernize it and they tried to, you know, make it something it wasn't. And that's what I'm worried about with certain, Well, at the same know, time, they they probably might have been restricted a bit because of the the oh. um, computer graphics, like the ability no. to do graphics at the time. But now if they attempted it and they still messed it up, I'd be like, really? But but even still, at the time when it was made, they had the technology to do that. It wasn't that. It was the fact that the director wanted to ha- had a certain vision and tried to make it darker than it was, and it didn't work. Like um, Batman. Well, Batman's a different story. I <laughs> Christopher love, Nolan's don't, Super don't, Mario I love Brothers. Chris, I love Christopher Nolan. I think he's a genius. <laughs> I'm um, not making fun of him. I'm just saying I know, Christopher but he, Nolan's yeah, darker Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> Basically. Um, but uh, in, in general... You know, Assassin's Creed is going to get a movie adaptation. I'm excited about that. They cast an amazing person to play. I like Prince play, of Persia. You know. uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. It was a good adaptation. And again, I didn't um, play the game. See, there you go. 
when you play the games, that's the thing I think that you need to understand is like, you know, if you've never played the games, you go see that movie. Yeah, it's going to be great because you're not going to base anything off of that's it. That's true. But it's, it's the equivalent of like going to see a movie based off a book like Harry Potter. First of all, like I love that series and I read all the books. I love the movies, even though I read the books and they were kind of off. But still, people are still going to base off there because they're going to see that movie in expectation of being like, this is like playing the game. This is like reading the book. Mm. Um, so, you know, for example, like I, I would die the day I see anything like um, Legend of Zelda get ad- adapted into, you know, a movie. Because even though the Netflix, Netflix I trust because they've been doing great jobs with their TV series and that's so what far. they're doing. Um, oh, so far. Yeah. Like, I mean, Orange is the New Black. Um, House of Cards, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, all that. Like, it's all great. And I don't mind them taking on, you know, something like Legend of Zelda because I know they'll do justice to it. They have more freedom than, like, a movie studio does because, you know, it's all about this company having to plug whatever they need to. Well, part so, of the I mean, problem it... is that in a video game is something you play um, and you can't emulate playing in a movie. Uh, in a book, it's something you read. So you can emulate that, like the vision, but, like the visuals. But, but what what is what is reading a book exactly? Well, you're it's making a story, it, right? Yeah, it's a story. So so, you, so that's the same thing you do with video games. You're yeah, playing it, yeah, but you're some, still getting a story. For some from it. people, it's also about playing. So you're not going to get the same exact feeling. But yes, the story they shouldn't mess up the story. And because people... but here's the thing is like I've never met anyone that's come to see a video game movie that said, "Oh, I didn't feel like I was playing the game." <laughs> They've always said, "I didn't feel like it followed the story." <laughs> Like, That's if we true. got a Mass Effect movie, like, we could, if we sh- One of the should, problems like is Halo. some games, their stories are so long, you know? Which, I, then I they can do multiple movies. I was gonna say, I wouldn't mind them breaking up a movie. There was you a know, rumor a while back about, a, was it Metal Gear or God of War movie? Which I guess God never happened. Well, there's a lot of movies that just got shut down because, you know, writers drop out or, you know, all that kind of stuff, but, um... Regardless, I think the base of my answer is just, you know, I think any games that don't have a more complex story should not be I would adapted. I would into like a movie. to see some games adapted um some computer animated game like some cartoony games if they stick to that same style like for example, um Ratchet and Clank and it's a computer animated movie, you know? Um mm-hmm there's i don't even think it's a rumor anymore i'm pretty sure it's official that sonic the hedgehog is getting a movie now oh, i want it if it's anything like night of the werehog which was I can't have a it. beautiful <laughs> what i can't have a, i can't have a sonic the hedgehog feature film i can't why they, this man sonic has been hit it's been miss 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 these past few years and just having a movie is not going to save that franchise but a computer animated movie no, if the computer animated show is terrible, why would they put a movie about it? The computer animated show is amazing. No, it's yes, not. It's so funny. <laughs> Rise. No, no. Yes. Sonic Boom is not funny. It is so. It is funny. so okay. I love it. I, this is a discussion for another day okay. because because we're we got one I'm more not, question I'm to not, answer. But oh. I'm not sticking up for the oh. game though. I'm just saying the cartoon is. Funny. Oh, but the cartoon. Okay, another time. Okay, another time. So the last question. Which will close out the... Uh, this isn't by the with... same person, is it? It is. It okay, is. but then we... there's an extra question. No, the other one was like, why is Kiba badass? I'm like, shut up, Chris. Get out of here. <laughs> We're not going to answer that on What the about end. me? Um, I know, right? I was like, dude, there's two people <laughs> here. Um, so what overused video game device do you hate the most? For example, device? overzealous tutorial... So I'm explaining. Oh. <laughs> um, for example, overzealous tutorials, multi-stage final bosses featuring Sonic the Hedgehog, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's what it says. I'm reading it word for word. I can't word. even think um, of any off the top of my head from Sonic. My my I well, just saying that's like an example. That's an overused game device. Is Sonic the Hedgehog? Um, as a Sonic the Hedgehog is a game device. Now, because it's like you put them in a game and it's doomed to fail, except for Smash Brothers. Um, huh. And Mario and Sonic, the Olympic Games, most likely. Um, I would say my least favorite video game device, it has to be backtracking. Um, yeah, and I that think does I, get I, think, I think I think I talked about this a little bit last time, but I don't like the fact that I... it's Okay, I should say backtracking in big open world games. Because when, for example... As much as I love Skyrim and I love that I love Bethesda and Fallout, 
um, as I didn't before. I I hated Bethesda before I played uh, Skyrim, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I remember the reason why I didn't like it was because it was so it took so long to get to one place, and then when you got to that place, you had to backtrack across the whole I, the whole damn map. And with Skyrim, even though there was fast travel, the idea was like oh, you haven't visited this place yet, so you have to travel across there with horse or on foot. And then you still have to go back before you do anything else, and it was just so annoying. So mm. I think backtracking is my least favorite video game device. Um, what would yours be? I didn't mind it so much in Devil May Cry 4. Um, I remember yeah. people complaining about it. But backtracking isn't so bad if if when you're backtracking, there's something new about it. Like in Devil May Cry, you were a different character. You switch yeah, from Nero to Dante. It... Just like, all right, this is somewhat new. And some of the environments changed a bit. I could see where people got annoyed. But <sighs> my least favorite device, I feel like there's something I got to think about. And I don't have a lot of time to think about it. Um, maybe tutorials? I mean, I don't mind tutorials, but sometimes... I think when they get out of hand, like Kingdom Hearts' tutorials, when it turns into like a three-hour Roxas story. Oh. And I love Kingdom Hearts. But... We're not even going to talk about Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> I love See, I'm not even going to... I'm not going to... I'm not going to put it down because uh, I, Kingdom Hearts might be my favorite video game series, but... Oh, yeah, no, there mine too. Are, there are things that just take too long. Like... I don't know. I ugh. I don't know. Maybe 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 tutorials. Like I don't know. I can't think of many other games where tutorials are are really out of hand. I mean, those are the ones that just yeah. come to mind. Maybe like, and I haven't played this in a while, but maybe the beginning of Twilight Princess. But that was also yeah, kind of like that. a tutorial. Maybe was that a tutorial or was it just like a really slow start? I don't. It was think a very it, slow tutorial prologue. I don't think slow starts count as a device oh uh, yeah slow it's more of a starts, flaw yeah because i fucking hated the beginning maybe. of metal gear solid 5 oh it took so long to get through that hospital just crawling oh yeah and i understand it's realism thing. it was realism but man it took 90 years i actually fell asleep playing the intro to metal gear solid 5 <laughs> and i love love hideo kojima's games but i was i literally got off work from the midnight launch of it, because I was working at GameStop at the time, I picked up the game and went home and started playing it. I already spent an hour installing it, so I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna. I don't have to work tomorrow. I'm just gonna play it." And I got through the prologue, and I ended up passing out on my couch. Did you beat that game? Oh yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. So when we record possibly Thursday, I'd like to speak yeah. about that game on your thoughts. So we got a couple of things oh, to yeah. speak about next time. Maybe Kingdom Hearts, Sonic Boom, which which we might be able to speak about Sonic Boom because I don't mind talking about cartoons if they're based on or tie in with video games. Mm-hmm. Like if we want to talk about Ultimate Ninja Storm Four, we could talk about Naruto a bit, which mm, I did I want to talk. talk about that with you. But it is now eight fifty nine, and I don't want to yes. miss a second of Game of Thrones. <laughs> so and we answered this. We answered all the questions. Yeah, so we did. Cool. So I guess we will be back hopefully Thursday, and maybe you'll yep. see it Friday. You m- might not be watching right now. It's Sunday, but you might not be watching this till Monday. It depends on how long it takes to get this up online. Yeah. But I guess that's the show for, sure. for this past week. Yeah. Thank you, Reese. Reese, for all your questions. Thanks, Reese. Awesome. Everybody else, get off your butts and ask questions. Yeah, we need lots of questions, different ones, really fun ones mm-hmm. too. So, um, yeah. All right, what is it? Uh, hashtag GG Gaming. GG, hashtag GG Gaming. If you uh, want to share some questions or hashtag what I started today, which helped, was hashtag QAGG. So questions oh. and answers, good game. Um, so guy and guy gaming, I guess. Or well, it was game, it was gaming. guy and guy gaming, and I just changed it to GG Gaming because it could be like works. Good, like game. good game, you know. Yeah. So if <laughs> you like guys want to ask any questions, you can do it on the Twitter at Keyblocker VA or at Drew Maru Comics. Right? Got it. Underscore so, between Drew Maru and Comics. Yes. So uh, <laughs> yeah. See you guys next week. All right. Take care, guys. See you next week. Happy Mother's Day to every mother. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Bye, guys. All righty. Cool.